Well, thank you for joining us this afternoon. We've got uh, what we call a lightning round here with uh, Josh Bowman. Uh, he is going to do a 15 minute talk. Um, he's uh, currently an analyst uh, with Air University's China Aerospace Studies Institute. And he's talking to us today about uh, China's digital twin. Take it away, I'll close the door. All right, so the topic today, enhancing the Bowerverse, PLA's digital twin strategy. Was it, did anyone come to Hammercon last year and listen to my talk? Anyone here? Okay, so the idea, just to give you an understanding of what the Bowerverse is. Um, so China has done a lot with the military application of the metaverse. They call it the battlefield metaverse. So I did a lot of research on that, did a, another report on that from last uh, HammerCon, and so the idea is this military application of the metaverse, what I translated as battleverse. So today, we're, deep, we're digging a little deeper into a specific technology, a digital twin. So we're going to look at the military application of digital twin technology. So you got a, a bit of a background on me already, so I'm going to go into that. Um, we're at China Aerospace Studies Institute. But beyond that, I'm also the Chief Marketing Officer here at MCPA. So it's really great to see you know, the second round of HammerCon. I want to continue to grow that, and we're really excited to continue to grow the, the community here. So, so yeah, the basic idea of what I want to accomplish today is give you guys a quick understanding of PLA's digital electric development strategy. And just again to caveat this, I did write an article on the Military Cyber Affairs Journal about this, so you get more detail there. So this is kind of like the, uh, a teaser trailer for this topic. And there's a lot more that we can discuss, but I want to give you the basic points, give you a basic understanding of what we're talking about. So to give a baseline, who's heard of digital twin? So yeah, to give a, a quick understanding of digital twin as we get into this, that basic concept of that, you can go back to the 1960s after the Apollo 13 mission, this idea of having a living model. Um, from there, it's developed obviously further with AI and everything else. Um, I like IBM's uh, definition. They give a virtual model designed to actually reflect physical objects. So, or a digital clone is another another definition that's given. So. Instead of simply just a simulation where you're maybe um, building a circuit or something like that, where you have a guesstimate, guessing, guessing what it might be like, you have an actual physical model that you're working with, you have that feedback loop. You can kind of predict, for example, it's an automobile, you can predict when it might need maintenance or something like that if you have a digital clone or a digital twin of an automobile. So that's the basic idea there. Um, so like I said, the PLA, is pushing for this idea of uh, digital twin as an important technology. But to understand you know, why they want to do this, I always like to kind of think about strategy. So who's heard of digital China? Basically, no, no hints, um, basically digital China, and I'm, I'm working on more research with this because I think that it's something that you really don't understand. Um, but this is a very quick, this, I have a whole long presentation on this topic, but uh, basically digital China could be considered China's digital grand strategy. It's broken up into five spheres, political, ecological, economic, and social. And one of the important aspects of this is this idea of the cyber, of the triad. So they have, within digital China, they also have cyber superpower and smart society. So what the Chinese Communist Party says is that we have to be a cyber superpower to you know to realize uh, the nation's national reju rejuvenation. It's one of the most important paramount objectives as they move forward as a country. And the most important thing to note with this is that unlike maybe other strategies, you can really trace this back to Xi Jinping himself. This is something he's pushed uh, since he was in Fujian as a governor, talking about digital Fujian and everything else. So the idea of Digital China is something that's major digital brand strategy that no one in the West really knows about. And the end goal is what they talked about in the triad, the smart society. So Chinese Communist Party realizing you know, all their goals and dreams and creating this magical land that they want to create. So there's a lot more into that smart society we can't get into right now. 
something to note, a slogan or a phrase that you use over and over again. And I think it's important to understand this grand strategy is when the future things that we like. So the idea here is that China is in a competition with the United States and others, that they must win. They must win the future. They have, like the metaverse, like digital twin, like we're talking about today, they have the potential to be the first mover and advance their objectives and their goals. There's a lot to that, but that's the basic idea there. It's winning the future, something they find at paramount uh, to their success. And like I said, digital twin has been identified as something critically important. Um, so obviously, if you were at my uh, talk last year, talking about the metaverse, within the metaverse technology, digital twin has been identified as one of the most important ones we can to advance. So, hey, can I, yeah. Real quick before you move on. Yeah. Um, I understand the other concept on the five the people I've built in the point out. Yeah, so one of the things maybe you may or may not know is that China wants to, is, is talks about the environment all the time. They're doing, you know, they have different grand cities and like that. I live in Beijing, so I know about the, the air quality there, but that's the basic idea is, is in this grand strategy using technology to improve the environment, whether it be, you know, like electrical vehicles, you know, battery technology and something, they're very advanced and things like that. So that's just part of it. It's, it's very comfortable. When you're talking about um, digital China, it's not just a small aspect. This is a grand strategy, all of society, military, industry, you know, global sort of idea. So I don't have time to get into more details. There's so much to unpack there, uh, albeit for me later to give a presentation on that. But uh, yeah, so, so we don't have much time. I want to get into specifically Okay, we're talking about digital twin, this digital clone of physical objects, things like that. What are some different applications that the PLA have been talking about that they can use digital, digital twin for? The first one, the one that they bring up the most in uh, various resources, is education. So the idea here that they talk about is you can, you can increase effectiveness, effectiveness of education while decreasing costs. So the example that I give here, there's more, uh, is you know, imagine you have a fighter jet engine. Complicated, you know, it would be a lot of cost and time to take it apart, understand how each part uh, works with the other, you know, and with a digital twin, you can break apart, visualize not just a picture of it, but a 3D image of that engine and understand it much faster. So the idea is, you know, being able to advance your military faster and faster with technology. And that's one avenue. Another aspect, this is I would say farther in the future, bless you, uh, is decision making. So here we talk about mapping in a virtual battlefield. Um, so essentially, imagine you have digital twins and cloud map platforms, weapon systems, battlefield environments. So you have all these different pieces, you know, like a, a chessboard. You have, you understand what's going to happen, uh, or you, you have an idea of what's happening. And then the decision maker, the leader, the commander, can have an, can decide, okay, I want, I want to look at my options. What if I did this? What if I did that? And potentially make a better choice than they would without that. So this is, I would say, as far in the future, but something that is possible in terms of, they talk about, you know, we talk about digital twin of cities. This is digital twin of the battle. So again, you're simulating those combat effects of what might happen. Okay, training. So one of the big issues with the People's Liberation Army is they don't have actual combat experience. So they, under Xi Jinping, they've tried to continue to improve what they call actual combat and understand how you know war may play out. Before they might have you know like these different training exercises and they always went. Now, you know, if you look at uh, one of the articles that I wrote recently, uh, people are dying and other things, things are not going their way. They're trying to really realize, you know, actual combat. So with digital twin, we're talking about, you know, twin, digital twin, you know, uh, virtualization of people, equipment, um, all these different things in the battlefield. And they talk about this idea of building, build with flames of war. The example that they, they cite most is with a U.S. company, Slingshot Aerospace. They're working with Space Force uh, to create a digital space plan. So particularly with space, and I mentioned this in my previous talk, you know, it's not easy to, to do like 
simulation where maybe you're at the Navy, you could go out in the ocean or something. Space much much more difficult. So the idea here is looking at this company, what they're doing for the US Space Force, something they would like to do as well to help train the soldiers. R and D is also something they see as huge potential. So here uh, I give a few examples. They're looking again at a lot of different countries. Um, looking at, for example, uh, in the UK, the Tempest Sixth Generation fighter, and how they're digitally cloning that, and the possibilities for that, and how, for example, if you have a digital clone of, say, let's give an example of an automobile. You know, maybe you want to do a design change. Well, you can you can see the, the digital clone of that and see what might happen. Maybe it's going to be an effective change, maybe not. So you have this feedback of understanding where you can move faster and advance things much more, much more quickly. So you can do that research and development in a much faster way, much less cost as well. Um, maintenance. So here I have a picture of Wings of Wong Wong Uh He is obviously a very high-ranking military official and engineer at Army Research Institute. His research is focused on um, digital twin uh, technology, specifically with maintenance. So, and I've already kind of hinted at this as well. So, imagine you have different military equipment. You know, when is it going to break down? When are we going to need new parts? When are we going to need, you know, X, Y, and Z? With a digital twin of, say, a factory or a, you know, a machine, a car, etc., you have a better understanding when those things uh, will break down, and you can predict that in an act. And instead of having it be, you know, very centrally located, the central command of, you know, like maintenance, you can have it, you know, parsed out where, you know, maybe there's a disruption in communication or anything else. It can be more automated and decentralized, and that's something they're trying to push for as well, move much faster. So you know when it's going to break before it breaks it is a massive uh, advantage you might have in any conflict. And then the final application is logistics. Um, logistics for the PLA is paramount importance. They understand that logistics is important not just since the Ukraine Russia war. 2016, during the reform of the military, they started the Joint Logistics Support Force. And here with Digital Twin, um, the idea is very similar to maintenance. It's on demand, fast supply of what they need. Um, and again, what I mentioned, centralized, more flexible. You can understand what's going on. If there's a change, you can adapt to what happens in a conflict and have an effective logistical supply chain, even if um, you know, communication disrupted with headquarters, for example. So uh, those are the basic applications they're talking about with um, the military application of digital twin. That being said, these are what's being reported right now in the PLA media. I would I would say that there are many other applications. For example, uh, one that I can give you is medical. You know, right now they're doing. I have another article on wearable technology in the battlefield and monitoring. You know, the health, mental state of their soldiers. So having right now the technology is not there to have a digital twin of the body, but there are you know different research going on, different things, you know, different aspects of the body that you could monitor. Uh, someone with sensors and other things like that going on to have a digital twin of some someone in the future. So I think that there is a medical component to digital twin that could occur in the future that I think that they would be looking at, although they have been taught. Um, some other things, just in conclusion here, is that, again, digital twin is part of something much bigger. It's not an isolation. It's part of this larger digital brand strategy called digital China. Who's it going? Um, and again, you know, this full spectrum understanding of what's going on in the battlefield, the digital twin of the battlefield is something that you know, they're working on, but it's, you know, there are, you know, things that they say, but not necessarily in full development yet. They're, they're in the research, the idea, the conceptual idea of that. Um, again, another thing that you may have noticed is that they're looking heavily at what the United States is doing, what our, West, what our partners are doing and allies, and that is something, as I say, is a major advantage because Unlike China, which may have to be more in isolation in terms of some of these developments in the military, we can work with our partners and allies and grow that way. Um, and then finally, uh, 
you know, as I concluded, I think that there needs to be international norms around digital twin, and also restrict those technologies, uh, you know, if they can be used for work. And I do have a quick sneak peek of about 20 seconds. So something else that I am working on, uh, ChatGPT, generative AI. I've never seen a topic more talked about in, in PLA media than this right now. So I'm going to be working on a paper in the future that will be coming out. Um, the threat and the potential for the use of, of ChatGPT in the military application, cloud domain, cyber domain, all domains is, is huge. So I'll be sharing with you that in the future. I just want to give you a, a teaser of that as well. And yeah, this is the beginning of this discussion. And check out the paper and military cyber affairs journal and, and all the other articles. And with that, that's everything. And um, you can contact me, uh, continue the conversation. I'm on LinkedIn all the time. Uh, so, and or email. That's it. Okay, thank you, Doug. I'm glad you're asking the question. Okay, Doug was from the frequent speaker at Hammercon, the second one, so I can't say. I'll be back. Yeah, I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and uh, as you mentioned, he does have an article in this month's journal. Uh, I just said he hadn't found into the journal. Uh, those, we had some limited printed hard copies, but we ran out. So they're all online, including back in. All right, thank so, you very much. Thank you for coming out. Yeah.